I think this photo will go down as one of the most disturbing photos in Appalachian Trail history. And that's because just hours after this photo was taken, the hiker in question named Geraldine Largay vanished. For over two years, Geraldine Largay was missing. And this raised a magnitude of questions about what happened to her. But in October of 2015, her body was finally discovered. And though this did answer some of those questions, I believe that even more questions were raised as her final location, her cell phone records, and her personal journal entries became known to the public. It saddens me, it scares me, and honestly it frustrates me because after Geraldine Largay found herself lost just off of the Appalachian Trail, she was so close to receiving the help that she so desperately needed. And yet, that help never came. Let's jump into the tragic story of Geraldine Largay. I'm on a mission to get this channel to 50,000 subscribers, so if you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button. In 2013, 68-year-old retired Air Force nurse Geraldine Largay set out on a thru-hike of the Appalachian Trail. She started about halfway up the trail near Harpers Ferry, West Virginia, and was planning on doing a flip-flop hike, meaning she was gonna hike north to the end of the trail in Maine, and then go back to Harpers Ferry to hike the second half of the trail southbound. She started her hike with a friend, and the two of them stuck together for a long time, all the way up until New Hampshire, where her friend ended up getting off the trail. In addition to her friend, her husband George was also tagging along, but in a slightly different way. George Largay was essentially acting as a support system for his wife and her friend. He was meeting them at road crossings, he was helping them resupply and bringing them into town. On July 21st, 2013, Geraldine Largay spent the night at Poplar Ridge Lean To in Western Maine. At this point, she was almost a thousand miles into her hike, which I have to say, it's badass for anyone to hike a thousand miles on any trail under any circumstances. But once again, she was 68 years old and she was hiking through New Hampshire and Maine on the Appalachian Trail. As someone who's hiked the Appalachian Trail the entire thing, that is some of the roughest, most difficult terrain out there. And I hope that when I'm 68 years old, I'll still have the physical and mental strength to be doing stuff like that as well. She wandered off of the Appalachian Trail to go to the bathroom as all of us backpackers do every single day. It's unclear to me what exactly happened next, but we know with certainty that Geraldine Largay never returned to the Appalachian Trail and ended up getting lost in the wilderness. It's every backpacker's worst nightmare, and I doubt at the beginning she realized exactly how dire the circumstances were, but she definitely knew that it was not good because shortly thereafter, she sent a text to her husband George saying, quote, in some trouble, got off the trail to go to BR, I'm assuming that means bathroom, now lost, can you call AMC to see if a trail maintainer can help me? Somewhere north of Woods Road, XOX. For those of you that don't know, the AMC is a organization that does trail work and trail protection up in the Northeast. Unfortunately for Geraldine, cell coverage is not very good in the deep Maine wilderness, and that text message never went through. She repeatedly tried to get her text messages to go through. She even climbed to higher ground to try to get some better signal. And I don't know, dude, I just find it really disturbing because it just seems like she was getting more and more desperate the more she fired off these text messages to her husband. On July 23rd, Geraldine's husband, George, was waiting at Route 27 where he expected to meet his wife for her next resupply stop. But Geraldine never showed up and the next day, George notified the authorities that his wife had gone missing. Very soon after this, a massive search was put together. It was headed by the main warden service, and I'm saying they really, really went all out. In addition to standard ground searches, they also had helicopters, they had horse teams, they had canine units, and they were even interviewing hikers that were in the area where she disappeared from. But despite this massive search effort, no trace of Geraldine was ever discovered. And as this search was getting underway, she once again tried to send a text to her husband. It read, quote, lost since yesterday, off trail three or four miles, call police for what to do, please, XOX. It's unclear to me exactly what happened after this, but it is clear that at some point after that text message was sent, she decided that her best option would be to stop looking, to set up camp and stay there and wait for rescue. And that's what she did. She set up her tent 
and she even set up a silver space blanket a little bit outside of her tent. It's not clear to me exactly what the purpose of this was. It could have been to protect her from the elements, give her a little extra protection. It also could have been to potentially attract the attention of people searching for her. There was also some evidence that she did attempt to start some fires because some of the nearby trees around her were charred black. She did all of this and then she waited and waited and waited. Geraldine Largue waited in this campsite for 26 days. 26 days. 26 days spent waiting for a rescue that never came. And as if that wasn't disturbing enough, it seems that with each passing day, Geraldine Largue became more and more aware that her life was probably coming to an end. And I say this because she kept a journal during her time waiting. She was making daily entries and she even drew out a calendar to try to keep track of which day it was. And I think the most, I don't know, chilling entry from, this is roughly two weeks before she actually died. She wrote, when you find my body, please call my husband George and my daughter Carrie. It will be the greatest kindness for them to know that I am dead and where you found me, no matter how many years from now. The last entry was on August 18th, 2013. Investigators do think that it's possible that she lost track of the exact date, so they can't say with certainty that August 18th was that last entry and that was the day that she died. We don't know exactly when she died, but it was likely sometime around that day. But the mystery of what happened to Geraldine Largue continued on well past August of 2013. For the next two years, hikers were only left to speculate about what happened to her and what caused her disappearance. That is until October 14th, 2015. On this day, possible human remains were found by a surveyor on property owned by the US Navy in Reddington Township, Maine, which is very close to the Appalachian Trail. Lieutenant Kevin Adam of the Maine Warden Service was one of the first people to investigate these findings. And he later said, quote, I saw a flattened tent with a green backpack outside of it and a human skull with what I believe to be a sleeping bag around it. I was 99% certain that this was Jerry Largan. Now that her body had been discovered, many of the questions surrounding her disappearance had finally been answered. We now knew with certainty that she had simply gotten lost in the woods and then succumbed to the elements and starvation. And while I don't really think there was ever a very strong case suggesting that foul play had been involved in her disappearance, any speculation that did exist about that was now proven to be false. But even though we now had all the answers about what had happened, I still have a lot of questions. These questions are about where she was found, how the search was conducted, and about some of the choices that she made before and after she found herself lost off of the Appalachian Trail. Based off of what I've told you of this story so far, you might think that she would have been found miles and miles and miles deep into the wilderness, far away from any roads, and certainly far away from the Appalachian Trail. But this turned out not to be the case. Geraldine Largay's camp was found less than two miles away from the Appalachian Trail. And of course she didn't know this, but still she was right there. Now I've never been in a situation like this before and I can't even start to imagine how stressful and scary it must be. And so as I discuss some of the decisions that she made, I just wanna be clear, I'm trying to do this with all respects to her. I'm not saying that she should have done this or shouldn't have done that. This is not about passing judgment on her. All I wanna do is speculate a little bit about how the outcome might have been different had she made some different decisions. And the first question I wanna bring up here is, Given she was found so close to the trail, what would have happened if instead of posting up in camp and waiting for rescue, she had continued to search for her way back? I think that it's entirely plausible that she may have ended up finding the Appalachian Trail again if she had kept looking. And not only was she relatively close to the trail, but Lieutenant Kevin Adam once again also mentioned that there were some other indications of civilization pretty close by to where her camp was set up. He said that in his investigation, investigation, he walked south from the campsite, which was in a very dense forest. And after doing that, the dense forest became open woods with quote, good visibility after 60 to 70 yards. And he kept walking. And then after another 25 minutes, he found what he described as a clear logging road. And not only that, but apparently this logging road also led to lodging, whatever that means. That's the quote. In total, he said the walk took him 
30 minutes. That's how close she was. And so even if she had kept searching and didn't find the Appalachian Trail again, could she have found another trail or a logging road that might have led her to safety? We don't know the answers to those questions I just raised. And honestly, it's easy to say this stuff in hindsight. Once again, I hiked the Appalachian Trail in 2018. So I've hiked through this area and I will be the first to tell you the Northern Maine woods are dense. They're very tight and I can easily see how someone could get lost there. Combine that with a lot of stress and anxiety that's just exacerbating the situation and I can easily see why she made the decision to stay put even though again in hindsight we know that she was pretty close to roads and the trail itself. There's another really big question that I'm sure a lot of you are already wondering about given we now know how close her body was discovered to the Appalachian Trail and this big question is how did the search parties and rescuers not find her. They started searching for her on July 24th, and as far as I'm aware, the search wasn't scaled back until August 4th. This means that they were full on searching with dogs, helicopters, and teams on foot for 12 days straight. I just find it really bizarre that she wasn't discovered, especially given she was camping in the area where she was known to have gone missing, and therefore would have been the area that they would have been searching. And to be clear, I'm not trying to blame the searchers or the investigators here. I remember when this story happened back in 2013, it was on the news and it was clear that they were doing everything they possibly could to try to bring her home safely. But unfortunately, they just didn't. And it's also crazy because it's not like they didn't come close either. It's since been reported that at least three different canine teams came to about 100 yards away from her camp. Three different times this happened. And again, I'm not trying to blame anybody here, but it does raise the question, how come Geraldine Largay didn't hear or notice the searchers? Now I'm gonna be totally honest, I don't know a damn thing about search and rescue. I'm not gonna pretend like I do. So if anyone in the comments does, maybe you could help me out a little bit here. But with that said, you'd think that the searchers would be making some sort of noise, right? Like wouldn't they be calling out her name? Wouldn't the dogs be barking? If there's a group of people walking around, wouldn't that be causing a commotion in the brush it just seems like if they got that close i don't know like i, I just I, I just it's just crazy to me that they got that close and neither party noticed each other they had dogs the dogs must have been following some sort of scent right and again i don't know anything about search and rescue but this just this part just blows my mind and once again geraldine Largay's final campsite was in a very thick dense part of the woods so i guess i can see how they wouldn't have noticed each other via sight i don't know it's just sad like they were so close and yet all three times, neither party was aware just how close they were. Today, through hikers on the Appalachian Trail and many other trails commonly use an app called Far Out for navigation. It's basically a GPS. It shows you your location on and around the trail and it works even when you don't have cell service. But in 2013, Far Out had just been started and the Appalachian Trail was not on the app yet. I'd like to think that in current times, a situation like what happened to Geraldine Larkin probably wouldn't happen because all a hiker would have to do is pull out far out and just use the GPS to guide them back towards the trail. It would not matter if they tried to send texts. It would not matter if they had cell service or not. But unfortunately, that wasn't an option for Geraldine Largay back in 2013. But GPS devices did exist then, obviously. And I even found an article that stated she had a GPS, she started with a GPS, and then at some point along her hike, unclear to me where, she lost it. So she didn't have it anymore. She didn't have it at the time where she got off trail. It's tragic, it's frustrating. And to me, it just seems like everything that could have possibly gone wrong in this situation did. My heart goes out to Geraldine Largay and her family. If anything, I hope that other hikers, future through hikers can take something away from this, can learn something from it. Once again, please help this channel get to 50,000 subscribers. I've been getting a lot of new subscribers lately. I appreciate all of you so much. Hit that subscribe button and of course, keep Geraldine Largay in your heart.